Good evening, everybody. Why don't we find our seats? Merry Christmas to everybody. I got to tell you, the, the sounds of everybody laughing and, and visiting and enjoying one another is a beautiful thing. And tonight, uh, we want to welcome you to Christmas Eve candlelight service. This has become a, a quite a tradition. I know for some, um, this is part of your family tradition, and that we're very honored that you would come and share this time um, with our church family. We're going to sing some songs of Christmas and read some scripture. And then, uh, as we always do, we'll end the time um, with the lighting of candles and, and proclaiming Jesus is the light of the world. How many of you know Jesus is the light of the world? Yeah. Amen? And we have hope. We have hope. And so as we sing these songs, um, they're more than just traditional songs. They're songs of hope and songs of worship. And so if you would like, um, why don't you stand with me? And we have Megan, who um, is one of our dear friends who's grown up here in our church, and she's going to lead us in some Christmas songs. So um, please feel free to, to join. Let me open up in a word of prayer, and then we'll sing to the Lord. Oh, God, you're so good. Lord, we just thank you for a place to, to be together as a community to take pause in the midst of a busy season and to remind ourselves why we celebrate. We celebrate you, Jesus. A promise that was given, and God, you were faithful to complete that promise, that you sent your son into this world as a child, and we celebrate his birth. God, as we sing these songs, as we read these scriptures together and, and light candles, may we experience your joy and your peace. And for anyone in this room this evening that's struggling in any way, God, I pray that you would bring hope to their situation. We look to you now, Jesus, and we honor you together in your precious name. And everybody said, amen, amen.
said that you guys have been singing this song a lot in church lately. It's called Waymaker. It's about how the Lord makes a way and he's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper and he's a light in the darkness. And that is who he is. So I encourage you just to, you know, sing this song from your heart and really just let those words sink in. Because the Lord is so good.
said we've been singing that song uh, quite a bit over the last several weeks and the part about that song that I, I, I really connect with is that God is a promise keeper yes. he never fails and when he promises something he will complete it even when it doesn't feel like it's happening on our time frame and, uh, and I wanted to encourage you with that we're going to have one more song but before um, you sit down for this one because you're going to want to sit down for this song but before you do why don't you turn and, and, and say hi to someone? Uh, listen, I was just at a church service. Let me just say this real quick before I lose you. Forget it. Just do your thing. God is a miracle worker, and it'd be a miracle if you all sat down right now after, after seeing one another. Listen, this song that, um, that Megan is about to sing, I, I heard this song last year. In fact, Lisa introduced this song to me, and um, the song is called Seasons, and it's just a brilliantly written song, and I asked Megan to play it because I, I think it really... Um, it speaks obviously to the Christ Christmas story and the lyrics you'll, you'll hear it um, but it's so beautiful to hear how God's character and his attributes are, are seen through creation and this song uses a, a metaphor of creation about the, the the seed the sequoia seed which is so small but grows to be something great 
And, uh, and so I just invite you, we put the lyrics up on the screen. If you know the song, uh, feel free to sing along with it. If you don't, just enjoy it and let the, the lyrics and the, the words um, just kind of wash over you um, as we prepare our hearts to read God's word together and, and just hear more about his faithful promises. So Megan, if you'd sing that for us. Like a forest on the road Winter comes for us all Oh, how nature acquaints us With the nature of patience Like a seed in the snow thing I know for sure is that 
if we ended the night just like this, we would be all good. <laughs> so everything from here on out is bonus, right? Megan, thank you so much for, for leading us. And um, yeah, that song, it just, I don't know about you, but when you hear it, it just, man, doesn't it just capture your heart? And the, the depth of, of those words, and I had done a little bit of research on the, the man that wrote the song, and he's actually an Australian guy, right? And, 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 and he shared about how his family took a vacation to California, and he was just a teenager, and he was so captivated by these gigantic, enormous um, redwood trees. Have you ever seen them? They're massive, you know, and, and that that had, had just kept in his mind, and so as he was thinking about that and the process that you go through. And how many of you are somewhere in a season or in a process? I mean, come on, raise your hand. It's an easy question. We're all in one. And, um, and winter is a particularly difficult one, it seems. And the Bible is full of agricultural metaphors, right? And, and the, one of the things that we know about uh, farming or anything agricultural is nothing moves quick, right? That there's a lot of work, a lot of preparation, and then waiting. And patiently you wait. And for those who wait patiently, and for those who've prepared the soil properly, and, and, and the trust in the, the process of, of what? You know, a seed, a soil, and then light, right? And as light brings life to that, it, it sprouts and it grows. And then when harvest comes, man, it's celebration time, isn't it? And, and that song is about that. I, I thought it was interesting to, um, I, I pulled up some pictures on the internet to look at what a little seed would look like of a gigantic, uh, that's not my finger, by the way, that's somebody else's. And that's a tiny little sequoia seed. And that sequoia seed gets planted into some rich soil and that rich soil produces this little shoot, Right? And that little shoot turns into this thing here. It's, it, it doesn't even make sense. It's, it's phenomenal. And as certain as it is that that, that little seed um, has life in it and will grow and, and form into something so beautiful and so huge, it's the same metaphor of our spiritual lives. It's the way that, that it is in our lives. And some of you are going, yep, I get the waiting, right? I get the process. But Christmas... And Christmas Eve in the Advent season is about anticipation. It's like on the edge of your seat. I know there's some kids in here, and I know you're pretty excited about tomorrow morning. I'm pretty sure you're excited about tomorrow morning. If you're anything like me, tonight is just, forget it, you're not even probably going to be sleeping that much. Um, you're going to be trying to peek out and see what, you know, when Santa comes, right, or whatever. And, uh, and, 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 but, but you're excited for the gifts that come in the morning. And, and for some of us who are still children at heart, we're the same way, man. We're barely going to sleep tonight because we want to see what our husband or our wife got for us, right? We want to experience that childlike faith and that, that joy of getting gifts. But, but see, Advent is about anticipation. And it's anticipation of a promise. Jesus came. God was faithful to his promise. It happened, right? The baby came. And the baby came and the baby grew to be a man and the man came and bore the weight of the sins of all humanity and grew. I love that line that it says from Bethlehem soil um, grew Calvary Sequoia. Wow. See, that's the perspective of the Christmas story. It's, it's one big story. It's not just celebrating a baby in a manger. It's celebrating the Son of God coming to us as a man and living and growing and without sin, going the full distance of death on the cross and then resurrection. Uh, I want to reflect on this lyric once again. It says, like frost on a rose, winter comes for us all. How nature acquaints us with the nature of patience. How many of you have prayed for patience before? <laughs> it's a prayer that God loves to answer. <laughs> And the answer doesn't always come in the way that we want it to, right? It doesn't, we don't just get like a bucket of patience, right? We get opportunities to grow in our patience. And it can be a difficult process, but it's a very worthwhile one as we grow and we mature. And so for century, well, let me read, finish reading. Um, um, with the nature of patience, like a seed in the snow, I've been buried to grow. And this is the line I love. For your promise is loyal, right? Your promise is loyal from seed to sequoia. Do you know God has a perspective way different than ours, right? 
He has an eternal perspective, and he sees the whole process. What do we see? We see the seed, and we see waiting and waiting and waiting. And it's, it's, it's the story of the Bible. In fact, the children of Israel had been promised a Messiah, a deliverer, one who would bring them hope and, and, and freedom and deliverance, right? And you go all the way back to the book of Isaiah. And I got to tell you, last night I was struggling a little bit, and I got up, and I was, went for a little bit of a walk, and I, and I opened up Isaiah chapter 9. And when I opened up Isaiah chapter 9, it was just like a flood of hope and joy came over me. I even got a little teary, you know. I'm just getting a little vulnerable with you here tonight. But, but, but as I did, it, it was just powerful to read these words, but to know the context and know the story that for, for centuries of waiting, right? And in, in the time that this is being written to the people of God who are buried, who are buried as a seed in exile, and they're hearing of hope of something greater and something better. Christmas reminds us that there are better days ahead. Christmas reminds us that there's hope. Christmas is about anticipation and it's about joy. And here's what the passage says. And I want you to to hear some of these things, especially in in context to to light. But in the very first part of Isaiah chapter 9, I'm not going to preach on it because we promised a one-hour service and we're going to deliver tonight. But but it says this in in Isaiah 9-1. Again, keep in mind where the people are when they're hearing the words from their prophet Isaiah, their trusted prophet. And when when Isaiah spoke, it wasn't just like, I wonder if it's true. Isaiah spoke on behalf of God, so his words were God's words to them. And these are God's words to you. Nevertheless, despite the season, despite how buried you are right now, despite your exile, nevertheless, it's a good word, huh? There will be no more gloom. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. No more gloom. Nobody likes Eeyore, really, right? There's no more gloom. For those who were in distress, in the past he humbled in the land of Zebulun and in the land of Naphtali. But in the future he will honor Galilee um, of the nations by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. And then it goes on to say, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And you have enlarged the nation, and you have increased their joy. And they'll rejoice before you as a people rejoice at harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them and the bar that crosses their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning for fuel in the fire. Kind of gruesome language, but what it's talking about is there's no more need for that stuff. There's peace on earth. Verse 6 says, this is the one you're going to know. For unto us a child is born. Sound familiar to you? For to us, a son is given. And the government or authority will be on his shoulders. And this is what he's called. And this is your gift. This is your Messiah. This is Jesus. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne over his kingdom. I mean, I've read that a thousand times. Maybe not a thousand times. I've read it a lot of times and I've heard it. How many of you have read it and heard it? And it's true every time. And as you hear it, I want you to, to hear these words about who Jesus is, who this gift of the Savior is to us. He's a wonderful counselor. You know, some versions of the Bible just call him wonderful and then counselor. Either way, it's great, right? He's wonderful or he's a wonderful counselor. He's perfect in all of his ways. How many of you know when you need advice and when you're down and when you need a perspective, you don't want a poor counselor. You want a what kind of counselor? A wonderful counselor. The one who is known as truth. He doesn't just speak truth. He is truth. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a mighty God. This whole thing is complete in all of its ways. Not only does he counsel us in truth, but he's mighty in his ability and in his power. He's mighty, a mighty God. He's an everlasting father. That means that he's faithful from beginning to end, that he'll never leave, never forsake us, that faithful is his name, loyal and true and faithful is he to every promise. He's an everlasting father. And this last one, in his way it describes him as the prince of peace. We talked a little bit about on Sunday how in the time of the announcement of Jesus that there was this proclamation of peace on earth. 
and, and peace on earth was far beyond the ceasing of, of conflict and war. Peace comes from something deep within us. As the Bible describes it in the book of Philippians, is a peace that transcends or passes all understanding. A peace that guards our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. This is what we have in our gift, in our Messiah, and our Savior. That we get peace when we shouldn't have peace. How many of you can agree with me and you know that in this world right now we need some serious peace? In just a little while, we're going to be passing around a, a flame, and the flame signifies Jesus as the light of the world, but as we carry it, we're carriers of his light into dark places. We're bearers of truth. We're bringers of hope, and we're reminded that that hope is in us. And along the way, in, in the midst of a tumultuous world, in the midst of ups and downs, isn't it a privilege to know that we can have peace and we can have stability, not just for our own um, enjoyment, but to change the atmosphere, to change the atmosphere of the room, to, to bring peace to anxiety. Like, I don't know what your scenario is or your situation, your home life, your work life, but, but I know this about God, that he imparts to you joy, he imparts to you hope, he imparts to you peace, and you carry that and you bring that into your world and you bring that into your sphere of influence and what a gift that God gives us in that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says this, as we round out this final verse of seven, it says that he will reign on David's throne and his kingdom um, forever, establishing it, upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. I love this line. The zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. I know some zealous people. I know some people who have high energy who can get things done. But I just got to tell you, the highest energy, zealous person that I know pales in comparison to the zeal of God. The zeal of God accomplishes the promises of God in your life. If you want to reflect again back on that song, his promises are loyal because God is eternal and everlasting. And so whatever he says is going to happen. And Advent reminds us that, that when we as the church sit back in anticipation of his arrival or his birth, it's not just the one arrival. It's not just because he already came, so we know that's going to happen. So if he kept that promise, guess what? He's keeping another promise too. The other promise is he's coming again. He's coming again, and this time he doesn't come as a baby, right? This time he comes to fix stuff. How many of you would agree with me that stuff needs to get fixed? And he comes again for his bride. He comes for his church, and he comes to make everything wrong right. This is the hope. And so you, just like people of old, just like the Hebrews awaiting their Messiah, you have that same anticipation year after year as Christmas comes. You know his promise is loyal. You're reminded that we're kind of supposed to be living on the edge of our seat, right? The edge of our seat, meaning we're going to get busy. We're going to work. We're going to do what it is that God's called us to do. But he's coming back anytime and we can't wait. And we want to bring everybody with us. That's what the candle is all about. The light of the world, bringing hope to people and bringing people along because the Messiah has come to bring salvation and he's coming again to bring freedom and deliverance and I really feel like preaching right now yeah. <laughs> so listen hope light the promise um, this is what Jesus said about himself right he says this in John chapter 8 he says um, Jesus spoke again to the people he said here I am I'm the light of the world and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness and will have the light of life from Bethlehem soil grows Calvary Sequoia. I'm just going to read this. It says that he is the light in the darkness. And for those who've received him, we carry this light and hope into this dark world. And Jesus said this so clearly. It was one of my favorite parts of the Bible and Jesus' teachings in, in Matthew chapter 5. He says that you are the light of the world. And you are the salt of the earth. I got to start over because I messed up. I got excited. You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. It says that you are the light of the world, and you're a town that's built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they light it and they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine for others that may, they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who's in heaven. In just a moment, um, we're going to 
I hope everybody's got a candle. And if you do, if you don't, we can get one for you. But in a moment, we're going to take the flame off of um, this candle. And, and we're going to go throughout the sanctuary and, and light your candles. We're going to turn all the lights off and see the beauty of, of, of our light shining. Light means hope, right? Have you ever been in a really dark place, like physically dark? And you got you gotta just a little bit of light. A little bit of light brings a whole lot of light into a dark place. In fact, even those that are in um, survival situations, they say like building a fire even helps them. It helps to warm them, obviously, but it does something to them psychologically to see the lights come on, right? Our world needs that. But this particular um, light now, for the last three years, um, the churches in Orange have participated in this really cool thing. Um, the flame that lit these candles is, has been ongoing and burning for 1,100 years. It's been an eternal flame in that regard. It's in an oil lamp in Bethlehem in a grotto. And in the grotto where the, the flame originates, and there's nothing magical about this, okay? It's just a cool story. I don't want you to think like it's, it's just fire, right? But it's really cool fire. Um, in, in this grotto in, in Bethlehem, uh, it's the historical site where Jesus was believed to be born. And so for centuries followers of Jesus, worshipers of God have kept to a tradition and always wanting to remember that light came into the world and so they kept this oil lamp burning. How cool is that? And so um, what's even cooler is that somewhere along the way this light began to pass from person to person, from um, worship, um, from, from places of worship to places of worship and then it, it, it went outside of Bethlehem and, and, and came from city to city and town to town and, and a, a boy scout from Austria gets on a plane every year. I don't know how they choose them. I don't know if it's like you cast lots or whatever, but it's this Boy Scout's turn. And he certainly has a really cool patch for it. I know it, but, but, <laughs> but he goes to this grotto in, in Austria and he captures the flame and he puts it in an oil lamp and he takes it from, excuse me, from Bethlehem and, and, and he goes and he captures it and he gets on an airplane with Austrian airlines, right? I mean, we, you, you can't even take like deodorant on a plane, but somehow <laughs> this, this kid gets a flame. So he's got an inside track with Austrian airlines and, and that, that flame makes its way over the seas. And it lands somewhere in, on the East Coast and, and it gets in, in different cars and, and, and people walk with it and they march with it and, and, and it all culminates together to Christmas Eve where there are services happening all around our city, all around our state. And, and, and all this to say, um, one of the pastors in the city got onto this and, and he said, hey, why don't we all meet down at the circle or the plaza? Uh, why don't we meet down at the plaza and, and, and at the nativity scene and we'll gather some people and we'll sing some songs and we'll pass that flame on and then you take it to your congregation and you take it to your congregation. So a couple nights ago, uh, we went down there and we got the, the flame and I got to tell you, we've been babysitting this thing for a couple of days now and it is a lot of pressure to keep this candle lit, man. <laughs> Uh, our house smells like pumpkin because we were down to the pumpkin candle to get it, to keep it lit. And, um, and so, it, but, but the whole time that we're like nurturing this flame, you, you, you realize how precious it is, right? N not the magic fire. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the story, right? The story. Um, tradition is really important because tradition is like a house for truth, right? It's some vehicle that helps us understand. We don't want to worship the tradition, but what's inside of the tradition. This is a tradition for some of you. I talked to somebody who said this is their seventh year of being here. Others of you can count on your calendar the amount of times. Maybe for some of you, it's your first time. But a tradition is, is something that gives you a grounding to be able to take the pause that you need to stop for a moment and capture the truth, and the truth that I realized needed to be captured in this fragile flame is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is going to go on and on, but it can never be tainted. It can never be rewritten. It can never be a different gospel. This is the story. The story is so simple, but so profound that God so loved the world. He loved each and every one of us that he sends Jesus as a child the song said it. he could have saved us all in an instant, but he brought a baby into this world to grow and to be like us so that he could understand us. And then that baby grows to adulthood and comes to the cross, bearing the weight of the, all the sins of mankind upon his shoulders. He dies on that cross, but he doesn't stay dead. He's resurrected and he lives today and he's coming again. 
And this is the story. This is what we remember. This is the truth. And this is part of our anticipation. And so I'd like to invite um, Pastor Andy and Pastor Scott and Millie, if you'd come, and Rochelle. And, and we're going to light these candles. And, and we're going to uh, make our way over to you. We're going to light your candle. And as you... Um, as you get your flame, would you pass that on to somebody else until we have all the candles lit? And then when we have all the candles lit, we're going to shut the lights out for a moment. We're just going to take some time to think about uh, uh, what we're doing here. We're going to take the time to think about Christmas. I got to tell you, in this season, um, I, I, I did the craziest thing yesterday. I went to the block or whatever they call it now, the, the outlets. And I had to park like six miles away and I had, to, I had to like fight people to, you know, get what I needed to get. Because everything is so chaotic. Are you with me? It's not chaotic right now. This isn't a sanctuary. This is peace. And this is a reminder that, that when you leave here, you're going to have more celebration. And there's this announcement. Let me read this announcement, right? This announcement that, that the shepherds give, excuse me, that the angels give to the shepherds is what I hope that you leave this place with. It says, And there were shepherds in the field nearby, and they were keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, Listen, here's what, what I want you to hear. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Come on, everybody say good news. Good news. You need good news. This is good news. This good news will cause you great joy. I'm going to do it again, even if it feels cheesy. I want you to say great joy. Great joy. Good news of great joy. For all people, that in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. And then suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and listen, peace on earth to those in whom his favor rests. Think about this announcement. Think about this joy. Think about the hope that you have as you hold the flame. The light of Jesus, the one who says, I am the light of the world. He's in you, he's for you, and he saved you. And you hold his truth, you hold his light, you hold the gospel, you hold joy, you hold good news, you hold peace. And as you're passing it on, it's a reminder of that. And we don't just pass it on in church. The most important place for it to be passed on is outside of these four walls where you know people who need it the most. And so uh, Megan's just going to play a little bit on the piano. We're going to come to you with fire, and then we're going to pass it on to you.
invite you to stand where you are if you, if you can do it without getting wax all over yourself. <laughs> How beautiful this is. Look around. Look around and see. That's what joy looks like. That's what peace looks like. That's what hope looks like. I mentioned to you that, that there's an announcement, and the announcement was of joy and was hope. It was good news of great joy. And, and I'm not a singer, but, but with our voices, you, you guys better go with me. Don't, don't leave me hanging up here. I beg you. But we're going to sing joy to the world, right? Just the chorus. Joy to the world. I don't know if we have the, the words up there, if, if we can get them. But joy to the world, the Lord has come. Can we just read the words out before? Um, or maybe we don't have them, so we'll just sing them. Here we go. Ready? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven, heaven and nature sing. Okay, now you're all warmed up. So let's sing that same chorus a second time. And as you sing it, know your part. Your part, you're a declarer of truth. You're a bringer of hope. And maybe some of you as you're singing it going, yeah, I would really like to be that. But here's how God works. He takes the foolish. He takes the weak. He takes those who don't think they're good enough or strong enough or whatever enough. And he fills us with his Holy Spirit. And he changes us from the inside out that, that as we bring hope, um, he's putting hope within us. Does that make sense? Sometimes out of our weakness and out of a sacrifice of praise, we bring his strength. And so let's sing this one last time as a declaration. And I'm going to pray a blessing over you and, and send you out with joy tonight. All right, here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Just take a moment and just quietly and just soak in the, the promise of God, the loyal promise of God. From Bethlehem's soil grew Calvary Sequoia. God, I declare hope, and peace, and joy, the fullness of your Holy Spirit over your people tonight. <coughs> Jesus, you came. God, just as you said, and we thank you, we can depend upon your faithful promises. If you are faithful to that promise, you're faithful to every promise. Thank you that you're coming again. And, and here's what I want you to hear tonight. You, no matter what you think about yourself, no matter how you feel about yourself in this present moment, but you, you're the light of the world. You're a city that's built on a hill that cannot be hidden. People don't put this lamp under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand because it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, this is your mission. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. God, we honor you. We worship you. We thank you. We praise you. We receive all that we need from you. Bless your people tonight. God, bless them in huge ways. Strengthen them and go before them as they celebrate Christmas. We honor you and we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Merry Christmas. And God bless you all.